بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم So we were talking about pride and arrogance and we were talking about how the ibadah or salat and worship destroys pride and arrogance because it creates humility in oneself and it just it should destroy the pride in us because we're submitting ourselves to a greater power which shows us that we're not the greatest power that exists when why whereas some people think that they are the greatest thing that exists like Pharaoh for example or Nimrud they thought that they themselves were god and um you know the worship that's accompanied with pride is never accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, someone is praying and they say, oh, you know, my Quran recitation is so beautiful. Everyone loves my prayers when I read them and this. Someone can get that, you know, maybe from excessive praise. Oh, you read Dua Kumail so nice. And then they start to get, you know, um, full of themselves, I guess we can say. And they get pride and, and arrogance. So now when they're reciting, they're reciting for the crowd to get the uh, emotion from the crowd and not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. So when we worship Allah, we're putting our face on the ground and we're saying that we are uh, low as, you know, as low as point that we can get our faces on the dirt, showing that we are humble and we submit ourselves, you know, and we're not greater or superior to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We left off on this part about the meaning of humility. It said humility is a condition of the mind wherein one uh, fully realizes one's own insignificance and the fact that one is utterly lowly and worthless. The, there are three areas of humility. So the first one is humility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one is humility towards Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And the third one is humility with people in general. So the first one is humility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's when we realize that our very existence and everything that's associated with it, everything that's in this universe is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the bounties that Allah has given us are through his lut for his grace and his kindness. And not because we deserve them or we have any right over him on those things. You know, some people think that they're entitled to receive the favor from Allah because they do prayers and they do fasting. So, you know, it's as if they think that they're doing a favor towards Allah. And now that Allah owes them somehow, like I'm Muslim, I'm doing a favor to Allah because I'm being a Muslim. So Allah owes me. Allah has to give me this. Allah uh, has to, you know, answer my dua. Allah has to give me this uh you know new car that i want or a new house that i want allah owes me because of all these salat and all these uh fasting i have done for him but these acts of worship are not for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are for ourselves. actually they benefit ourselves. allah is independent of free of need al ghani he doesn't need our worship and he doesn't need uh anything from us when we worship him it's not uh, somehow that he needs our worship and uh, because of our worship it is benefiting him. Like in, uh, I remember one of these uh, cartoon movies. I don't remember which one, but I watched it with my kids. And the, the, the person, if people didn't believe in them, you know, then their power dwindled. And when they got, when people believed in them, uh, you know, like one of these fairy tale uh, books like Santa Claus or, you know, um, you know, all of these type of characters, Tooth Fairy or something like this. When Allah, when they, when the people uh, believed in them, then they got power. But when the people stopped believing in them, they faded. This is not how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because Allah is not in need of anything. So Allah doesn't need our worship, but our worship helps us actually and helps us submit to Allah's will and recognize our true purpose on this, uh, you know, universe. He says this realization creates a feeling of humility and lowliness towards Allah, which is to be expressed by continually seeking Allah, seeking his pleasure through sincere obedience, worship and good actions. To be aware that we are not really able to worship Allah as he deserves to be worshipped 
and to be aware of our severe limitations and fulfilling our duties towards the Almighty because of our ignorance and lapses. Uh, one time, you know, Musa salam, was told to worship Allah as he deserves. So Allah told him, worship me as, as I deserve to be worshipped. Where at Musa, he said, you know, uh, I'm not capable of worshipping you like you deserve to be worshipped. And, you know, Allah told him because of that, uh, him recognizing that fact that he is not able, he doesn't have the capability to worship Allah as he deserves. The fact that he acknowledged that was in fact worshiping Allah as he deserves. We see Rasulullah, the greatest creation ever in existence, that he would pray until his ankles would swell. And uh, his wife would ask him, you know, you are guaranteed Jannah. You are the, you know, Rasulullah, you're going to paradise. You know, why do you need to put so much effort into praying that your ankles swell? And he said, you know, why shouldn't I be a grateful servant of Allah? Because he knows, you know, no matter what we do, we will never be able to worship Allah the way he deserves. And when we, we realize that there is something that is over us, that is our creator that is greater than everything in existence and he is above everything that um it makes us you know not be proud because we say that something is greater than us we are not the greatest thing ever whereas someone who doesn't believe in Allah they say oh because i have done i have discovered such and such technology and i have you know flown for example, a spaceship to, you know, a rocket to the moon or another planet or something like this, then, you know, I'm the most superior of all the creatures because no other creature has done this before me or these type of things. They'll get those type of ideas. But when we believe in Allah, we realize that, you know, there's nothing greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like when we say Allahu Akbar, we say Allah is greater than being, even being compared to other things. He says, our humility is also expressed by an intense feeling of gratitude towards our creator for the many favors he has bestowed upon us and to be continually thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we realize that everything that we have is due to the favor of Allah. And we have to be thankful to Allah or the one who is not thankful, he gets his blessings reduced. They will get cut because he is not thankful. So we should always be thankful servant to Allah. It said that it's recommended that whenever we're reminded of our, you know, past bounties or favors that Allah has done to us, we should perform sajda to shukr, uh, prostration of thanks, You're doing one sajda and saying shukran lillah. You know, many times we rush to leave after salat. As soon as salat is over, we are up and we are running out the door or going back to what we do. But, you know, instead we should never forget to do this sajda to shukr. It's mustahab, it's no blame if someone doesn't do it, but it only takes a few moments where we can thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the bounties that he's given us and even for the bounties that we are unaware of, that we don't even know that he has given us. Maybe he averted some calamity from us that we didn't even know about and we don't know to thank him, but we thank Allah for everything, even the things that we uh, forgot to thank him for or the things that we are unaware to thank him for. He says, divine favor should be regarded as honorable and sacred as they are bestowed on us from our Lord and Creator. Uh, Rawayat from our Ma'asumin emphasized the utmost respect we should have for the sustenance that we get from our Lord. When you sit, you must sit with humility like a slave and eat like a slave. Rasulullah when eating, he used to sit in the position of tashahud that we do in our salat. He said, the etiquette according to the Ma'asumin, alayhi salam, to be observed while eating is that we do not eat at the table. Instead, we remove our shoes and sit with, res with respect on the ground. And this is how they ate. This is their sunnah. So this is a sunnah that we can do. There's no harm in eating in, at a table, but this is just the recommended way that we eat on the sufra on the ground. And he said, the author says that we pay special re respect to bread. You know, in the in the Middle East, I don't know, probably they do this in Pakistan too, and I, they do it here in uh, Turkey. They respect bread a lot. 
you know they don't throw it away and with the rest of the garbage for example when you go by the trash cans you'll see uh plastic bags tied with bread on the side they don't throw it in the trash with the with the rest of the stuff or they give this leftover bread they take it and they give it to the birds for example even my friend was riding on a bus through town and he had a a bag full of groceries and were very heavy and he set the bag on the ground and the bag had a loaf of bread in it and one lady told him don't put the bag on the ground the bag has bread you know lift the bag and hold the bag you know up you know to, to not to disrespect the the bread so you know the t there's a lot of care into you know what we eat how we eat etiquettes how uh, islam has etiquette for everything and there's a small booklet, maybe you have it, or it's free online, P the PDF is uh, Islamic Laws of Food and Drink by Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani, of the law. It has a section in there all about the etiquettes of eating and drinking, and also the laws of what we can eat and what we can't eat, and many things. And it's a lot of information in a small booklet, it's very nice. So he said, all the members of the household, both men and women and servants, should all sit at the same dinner spread. So you see, it's not uh, separate where the servants are eating one place and the family is eating other place. He's saying that they all eat together. There's no difference. And we see this in the story I mentioned before about Imam Ridha, alayhi salam, where someone told him, I think you should make the servants sit over there the African servants, and he said, no, we are all from, you know, have the same father, which is Adam, and, you know, there's no difference between, basically, there's no difference between us, because Allah says the one that is better is the one who is, who fears Allah more, just paraphrasing the story, so he showed him that there's no distinction between black and white and servant and non-servant and these things in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, we start to eat with Bismillah and end with Alhamdulillah. And more important, to be aware and attentive toward the one who is the provider, our Razak. To be, remember who provided us with this food and to be thankful for this food. He said, the respect we accord to food is such that even if some food doesn't suit someone's health, you know, that it doesn't set well with them. Maybe someone cannot eat dairy. It makes their stomach upset. Or someone cannot eat you know, too spicy food or something like this. He said that the author says one shouldn't say that this food is harmful or the food made me sick. He should say rather my health wasn't suitable for the food or I ate it at a wrong time, you know, something like this. He's showing like the respect towards the sustenance that Allah has given us not to disrespect it and say and put the blame on the food. Maybe to say that uh, it, it wasn't good for me at that time or something like this. Humility before Allah is to show respect and honor for all things connected with Allah. The names of Allah, for example, are not to be touched without wudu. There shouldn't be any disrespect shown toward the names of Allah or they shouldn't be, you know, uh, trampled on or walked on or thrown uh, with the garbage, for example. And he says that no one should sit with their legs stretched towards them, towards the name of Allah. And this also, you know, we cannot touch the name of Allah without wudu. And this also applies to the name of Allah uh, in any language, whether it is God, Khuda, Dios, or any of the, the, you know, the names that they translate into other language. When it comes to the, to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be in wudu when we touch these uh, the name of Allah. Also, he said, ma uh, masajid or the masjids are sacred places that we should respect. We should feel the utmost respect for them. And uh, he says, Allah says in Surah Al Jinn, Ayah 18, indeed the mosques are for Allah. So these are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to respect the masjid. He says, you know, we shouldn't spit in the masjid, for example, or to enter with, um, you know, bad odor or to speak loudly or to speak about, you know, the things of this dunya in the masjid. Um, this applies to masjid, but we can also take it a step further when, you know, the places that we remember, Ahlul Bayt, like Husseiniyah, because most of the centers 
in America are not masked yet. Maybe just a few of them, like one in Dearborn and maybe a few other places, but most of the time, because masjid has a lot of rules, a lot of laws, and a lot of things you can do and a lot of things you can't do. A lot of um, also it needs to be established, not a place that is bought. It needs to be built from the ground up as a masjid, and you cannot sell it and without many other conditions. So it's it's more difficult for masjid. So most people make a Hosseinia or Islamic center like a Marquez or something like that. So he said we should respect the masjid. I also say we should respect Husseinia also, you know, in a similar way. And we have to remember why we are in that masjid in the first place. Because masjid is like Beitullah, like a house of Allah, where he's remembered at. And unfortunately, you know, some people, they come to meet at the masjid or the Husseinia, and they come to discuss haram things, or they make bad plans, or they, you know, backbite one another, and they come to the center for that. You know, we have to remember the purpose, why we are coming there. And, you know, when someone does these things, they come to the masjid in order to backbite. It's type of arrogance, really, to say that I'm going to go in the house of Allah, and I'm going to talk bad about other people. But people don't think about it like this. They just look at it like a building, because they've lost touch with the reason why they're going there in the first place. So we have to remember and be conscious of Allah and what we're doing at all times. So this is in regards to um, humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second thing is humility before the Prophet and the Imam, alayhi salam. He says, the most eloquent expression of humility and helplessness before Allah is humility and a feeling of lowliness before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala and the Imams. They are the, you know, ayatullah, the signs of Allah. And they are the representatives of Allah on the earth. So we have to feel utmost respect for them and express that, you know, respect in every suitable way that we can. So uh, humility before them is due to the fact of the position that Allah has given them. And it is because Allah has honored them. So honoring the signs of Allah is also honoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should not touch their names without wudu also. Uh, it is when it comes to the names of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, it is mustahab not to touch their name, not uh, to not touch their name without wudu. When it comes to the name of Allah, it is wajib not to touch their name without wudu. But we should be careful and, you know, uh, um, adhere to the mustahab too when we can, not to touch their names without wudu. So, uh, he, he says we shouldn't pray Salat facing their grave also. And also, uh, not mentioned here, we shouldn't turn our back towards their grave either. So we can pray, but not uh, directly facing you know, their grave or with our back toward their grave. Sometimes you see some people in the Haram, they don't mean to, but they pray under the, you know, in this inside, not in the Sahan, but uh, like near the Dari, under the dome. And they find the spot and they pray, but they don't realize, they just want to pray quickly there and they don't realize that their back is, their backside is toward the Dari. And it's disrespectful. So you see the Khudam or those servants of the Haram, they'll tell them to move and go somewhere else and pray like on the side. So like, for example, um, there's a place you can go on the side of the Dari where your right side is facing it. For example, your right shoulder is beside it and you're praying straight, but the grave is not in front of you. It's beside you. There's no problem in that. But to pray toward it, also praying toward it uh, gives bad, um, you know, idea towards these people who already think that we are worshiping the imams. So it doesn't matter what they think, because uh, when they look at our ziyara, they are full of tawheed, you know, but they take these pictures and they do other things with it. He says we must utter the, their names with respect and recite blessings and salam to them. So we need to, you know, give them the respect that they deserve. For example, 
instead of saying Ali says, we say Imam Ali or Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. We put respect to their names. Instead of Musa ibn Najafar, for example, we say Imam Musa ibn Najafar. So we respect their names and we say alayhi salam after their names. Um, he said that some ulama even wouldn't utter the names of the 14 ma'asumin without being in wudu. This is an extra step that they took to show respect towards them, which is not wajib on us to do, but it was uh, they were so mindful of the position of Ahlul Bayt that they wouldn't even mention their name without being in wudu. Subhanallah. So he says that when Imam Sadiq salam, spoke the name, of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala, that he used to bow so much that his face used to touch his thighs. So this is the respect that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam would give towards uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala. In the same way, we respect and honor to the scholars, the ulama and the sadat, the lineage, the descendants of Rasulullah and the imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. One should respect them you know, uh, any just uh, scholar meeting the qualifications of being scholar, then we should respect that scholar. Uh, do and, and we should respect also if they're non-scholar, maybe they are Sayyid. We say Sayyid, in, uh, for example, or our master, or, or, you know, or Sayyid, you know, from the line of the Prophet. We show them respect due to their lineage with the Prophet. So this is Second point regarding uh, humility with the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt salam. The third point he mentions is humility with people in general. He says all the human beings are equal with respect to their creation. All are creatures of Allah and Allah is the one who sustains and nurtures us all. So we are equal in this. All of us are under his protection, his vigilance, his jurisdiction, so it doesn't befit any human being, both by logic and rules of sharia, to consider himself superior to any other person and to feel proud about that. And uh, he doesn't have a right to expect anybody to be humble and submissive to him. He, he can't think, oh, because I am, you know, from this place, this other person is from a, a, a lower country, for example, that he feels is lower, uh, they must respect me because I am from here. Or I am this color and uh, the other, uh, this person is a different color. So he needs to respect me because uh, I am uh, a, a more, you know, superior color. With, there are no superior colors. But some people, well, a lot of people, unfortunately, have that in their mind. Uh, he says the only superiority that one human being has over another is on the basis of taqwa. Who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adheres to his duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, but some people are superior because of their position, and we have been commanded to show respect and humility towards them. The best example is our parents. Honoring our parents and being uh, humble before them is honoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being humble towards him because Allah has commanded us to you know, respect our parents. And besides uh, parents, one has to give respect towards his fellow believer, his fellow mu'min. So a believer has a very special rank, you know, in a dignified position, in a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So honoring a believer or being humble towards a believer is also, you know, like being humble towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is fisa billallah, it is in the way of Allah. And we have a riwayat from Imam Bakr alayhi salam, alayhi salam that says, you know, the honor of a believer in the view of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than the honor of the holy Kaaba. So no one would ever want to disrespect the Kaaba, but people forget this and they are ready to disrespect their fellow believer right and left. No problem. They have no care about disrespecting Muslim brother or sister, but their sanctity is more than the you know sanctity of the Holy Kaaba. He said the respect and honor for all signs connected with Allah, like the masjid, uh, he we already discussed those, and he said in the same way one should show respect and humility towards ulama 
or teachers, elders of the community, and guests. And we have this example from Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. He says Imam Sadiq, uh, you know, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said that Imam Hussein alayhi salam never walked ahead of Imam Hassan alayhi salam and never spoke first in public in order to respect him. So this is the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam to honor and respect, you know, the elder is his brother, you know. Um, I don't know how they have this in like uh, Urdu, but in Turkish, they call someone who's older, like a guy calls another guy who's older than him. They call him Abe. Abe is like, you know, my older brother. So they show this as a, like a respect to the elder brother, elder person, you know, than you, um, you know, maybe he's five, 10 years older than you. You call him by this as a type of respect. And we should respect, you know, our elders, and um, fellow believers, you know, because respect is something that's essential for mankind and it creates, you know, harmony amongst people. And without it, you know, there would be a great number of conflicts in the world. There would be a lot of wars due to disrespect. And we were created and given respect by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So we have to learn from this that if Allah, if Allah respects mankind, then we should also follow the sunnah of Allah and we should also respect mankind. We have rawayat from Amir al-Mu'maneen Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. He said, respect your father and your teacher by standing up when they enter the room, even if you are a king, subhanAllah. We see that Yusuf alayhi salam, you know, uh, he went and greeted his parents, you know, uh, and we should also respect our teacher when they come in the room. This is why you see many times there's a room full of ulama and alam walks in, everybody is standing up and then they sit back down. There's a lot of standing up and sitting down, but it is a sign of respect for the person. Also, when they are leaving, we're standing up and shaking their hand and because it gives importance to the person is an honor, it's a respect for them that you went out of your way and you stood up and you shook their hand and saw them out. Now, unfortunately, you know, the respect that's shown towards our elders and our parents has diminished over the generations. And Islam gives us the best, you know, culture, the Kafatul Islamiyah. The best culture is the culture of Islam. And it teaches us how to respect each other. And, you know, we shouldn't be influenced by the West and the Western values and that they don't show much regard for the family structure. And this is due to media, mostly making children shows where the children are actively and openly disrespect their parents. You know, they challenge them uh, boldly. They disregard their opinions and matters. They're always giving them attitude and these, you know, series that they're making for kids to watch. Parents are busy working. Kids are watching TV. God knows what they are watching. When they, you see what they are watching is putting bad ideas and they're learning the kafa or, uh, you know, like culture from these shows. And they think this is how the way to be. We have to be very careful with that. You know, instead of them, they're looking at these things, instead of them learning the Islamic culture and their worldview, uh, they're taking their worldview from un-Islamic television shows. So we have to instill in them the uh, teachings of Ahlul Bayt salam regarding the family values. And we'll end with this rawayah that, you know, the Imam Sadiq salam said, be careful and teach your children the narrations of Ahlul Bayt basically the ways of Ahlul Bayt and teach them before the corrupted people, you know, um, succeed in corrupting them. So if we don't teach them, somebody else is going to teach them. They're looking for guidance. If we don't give it to them and we don't pass down this knowledge that we have and that we learn from Ahlul Bayt salam, and this Islamic culture that we have, then they will learn culture from somewhere else. And then we will wonder why are they acting like that? So we have to, I know it's hard and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and you're tired from working and all of these other things, but we have to invest our time in teaching our children the way of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So these are the three things that the author speaks about humility. We talked about humility towards Allah, 
humility towards Ahlul Bayt salam, and humility towards fellow believing brothers and sisters in Islam. So next week, inshallah, we'll pick up from here and then we'll talk about how our relationship, you know, and how we deal with disbelievers and transgressors and sinners and arrogant people and how we should act towards them. So we'll end here, inshallah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.